we are in Munising, Michigan. I believe I said that right. And we had to get a pasty because I'm making pasties and we have to try theirs before I try and one them up. Just kidding. Oh, that's pretty good. So what are your thoughts, Abby? Honestly, it's good, but it's a little boring. Really? Yeah, I think it needs sriracha. Cool. Well, now I have something to go off of. We'll see what happens. What's up, guys? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Let's Play Ride and Eat. I'm your host, Chef Natalie, and every Wednesday, I'll be bringing you plant-based meals, cooking from my van, making it dope. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying our videos. Let's get into it. So, we are in the UP, the Upper Peninsula in Michigan right now. It is absolutely insanely gorgeous here. My dish today is going to be inspired by one of their staple snacks, I guess it would be, called pasties, which is essentially a hand pie, and then you stuff it with, like, different fillings. I'm going to do a vegan pasty today for you guys. I'm going to start with a dough that's five ingredients, very simple, and then I'm going to fill it with picadillo, which is a Puerto Rican ground beef or Latin American ground beef filling. It is unbelievable. It has tomatoes, olives, and raisins in it. But before we start this amazing dough, I need to have my freaking beer. We're in Michigan, so we picked up a six pack that is local from Keweenaw Brewing. This brewery was amazing. We went here twice. We did some work and enjoyed some brewskis. It is Keweenaw Point Trail Ale. We actually did this trail, so it feels even closer to home. And it's so hot in here, so this feels amazing. Dough is very simple. I'm going to do it in my blender. If you have a blender, do it in the blender. If not, you can totally do this by hand. We're going to start with your dry ingredients. So we're going to put all of our flour into the blender. This is just AP flour. Next, I'm going to be putting in some annatto. Annatto is just more for coloring. Next, I have salt. We're going to use one full stick and about three quarters of another stick. I never said it was healthy. I'm going to break it down a little bit just before I put it in the blender. I'm going to pulse this. I do not want to keep it on blend. I'm going to pulse it so that I can control the texture that it becomes. I want to have a sandy texture, so we're going to put it on low to start. And I'm just going to slowly pulse until I start to see it come together. Now you may have to stop and use a spoon or a fork to help it along. Keep pulsing. It is so hot in here, I can't do this anymore. You are looking for a very cold butter to go in here, which will help it become like a fine breadcrumb, almost like beach sand. But when you get to that point, you're going to put it on low, and then we're going to start adding our cold water. So ideally you want ice cold water. Again, I don't have a freezer. So it's as cold as I could get it, but you would like you should have ice cold water. Run it on low and then slowly add our cold water. Okay, so we have our dough out of the blender. You just want to form it into like a little like a frisbee almost. And you want to wrap it. You're gonna need to cover it tight. You can use plastic wrap, but Abby and I are not about that life. We try to be as waste free as possible. So we have our beeswax wraps. These things are really cool and you can reuse them. We will put a link in the description if you're interested in these. So that's it. Look at that color, isn't that beautiful? That's from that annatto. Let's wrap it up and we're gonna put it in the cooler. While that's in the fridge, it's gonna take a couple of hours. Abby and I and the dogs are gonna go freaking enjoy ourselves at this beach we're at, Miner's Beach in Michigan. This beach is insane. You guys need to come check it out with us. Let's go. Well, hello, welcome back. We had an amazing time on our break. 
We're letting the dough cool. It's nice and cool now. That waterfall is insane. That beach, that beach is crazy. That beach is crazy. Probably top 10 favorite beaches I think I've ever been to. So now we're gonna make our filling for the pasty. We're gonna start with sofrito. And so sofrito is basically the holy grail of Puerto Rican cooking, in my opinion. It's a base that you use to flavor soups, meats, rice, whatever you want. And it's basically cilantro, peppers, tomatoes, a hot pepper, garlic, and onion. So we're gonna take all these ingredients and rough chop them because they're gonna get blended. So you don't have to worry too much about your cut. I'm gonna throw this in the blender. Add a little water, get it going. This is a frito. I didn't make a lot because Abby and I just don't have the storage inside of our fridge. However, the recipe in the description will be about double this. It will yield about double. So you can totally freeze this. You can put in ice cube trays actually, and then you can just pop out one as you need it. This stuff is amazing and you can just saute pretty much anything with it that you want to have a dope flavor. Now that we have our sofrito, we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna talk about the rest of our ingredients in the picadillo. The base is gonna be TVP. So picadillo is typically a ground beef, but since we're doing vegan, we're gonna do TVP, which is textured vegetable protein. This is basically a dehydrated soy product. Very high in protein, this stuff is amazing. It takes on pretty much any flavor. So this is gonna resemble our ground beef and I love this product. We also are gonna be using a packet of Sasson Goya. Let me show it to you because you need to know what this is. For the Puerto Ricans, just it just needs to go in your food. This is the array of other ingredients going into this dish. So let's cut these things up mm -hmm. and get them in our meat. So I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil to saute our veggies that we just cut in that awesome manner. Don't need much, just enough to wet our whistle there. I'm going to add our cut vegetables. To that I'm going to add some cumin, a little bit of dried oregano, a lot of bit of dried oregano. I love oregano so I'm going a little cray cray. You don't have to go so hard but I really like it. Yeah now we got that sizzle going. I'm going to add that sasson goya packet we talked about. Look at that freaking color that that sasson gives this meal. Like look at that. Now that our spices are toasted and our potato is starting to get tender, we're gonna add a little bit of salt and we're gonna add our sofrito. That much. <laughs> Again, all the details will be in the description, so don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you astray. It will have some, you know, more accurate measurements. Not super accurate, but more accurate. And we're gonna cook that. For a couple of minutes, we want to cook it so that the raw onion and garlic flavor gets out of it and then it's going to get nice and pasty. So now that our sofrito is pretty much absorbed into our potatoes, we're going to add our textured vegetable protein. I'm going to add probably about a cup. Now since we're rehydrating this, with I'm going to add some liquid to it, it's going to about double in size. So I'm just going to incorporate it so that it can start to rehydrate, get all those dope flavors in there. And now I'm going to add some stewed tomatoes. Beautiful. I'm gonna cover this, probably cook it another four to five minutes on low. Let's see what we got. Oh my God, y'all. I'm trying to tell you, like, look at that. That looks like ground beef to me. That is picadillo. You do not need the meat. Like, that looks amazing. Let's try it really quick. Bye. Bye, I'm retiring. This doesn't even have the raisins and the olives in it yet, okay? We're gonna put those in now. I waited because I don't wanna put the raisins and olives in too soon. Hello, bear. Um, the olives are very briny, so the more that liquid cooks out, it's just gonna make the product saltier, so I wanted to wait till the end. So now we can sprinkle those. And also, the same with the raisins, they're very sweet, so I didn't want it to get overly sweet or gummy. And you don't need a lot, just a little bit here. That's perfect. You want to make sure all the liquid is absorbed because you're going to be putting it in that dough and you do not want it to leach out when you're cooking it. Now what we have to do is let this cool completely. You want to make sure that it's cold filling going into your cold dough. So this is how you cool something off in a van that's super hot. I cannot just throw this in the fridge so I have it on a plate spread out and I got my fan turned to fan in and I'm just going to hold this for a little bit. <laughs> Our filling is cooled. So we're gonna get our dough out. So I'm gonna go a little bit smaller because I have to makeshift my oven. So I do not have an oven in my van. 
I'm going to get there at one point. I did not decide to do that when we first took off on the road and now I'm regretting it. You will do it in an oven. Link is in the description for the time and temp. And also I'm gonna use my tortilla press because I have one to roll these babies out. So that way they'll be nice and even. We're gonna use our tortilla press. If you are interested in a tortilla press, we will link it in the description. We got this on Amazon. It is about $30. This thing is awesome. You can use it for tortillas, but also for several doughs. If not, you can use a rolling pin. I do not have a rolling pin. I don't feel like using a wine bottle. I'm gonna use my tortilla press. I just have a piece of plastic in between. Yes, it's plastic, but we have been reusing this thing for weeks, months. Abby said months. <laughs> So it is not single use, it is several uses over time. Okay, so I'm gonna put my little disc in the middle and then we're gonna cover it like so. And then we will press down, see what we got. Whew! So now we have our pasty dough ready. Our filling is cool, so we're gonna fill that bay. A few strong hands worth, maybe two and a half strong hands. Perfect. So now we have our filling. We're going to fold that bay like a half moon. Press in a little bit so the filling stays in the middle. So I just place it in my makeshift oven. It's nice and hot in here. And I'm just going to put the lid right on top there. Again, nobody should be doing it this way. This is my method. This is all that I have. It's on low heat on the bottom. I got it high at first so that it could get the cast iron hot. But now it's on low heat. And this is going to help me get that brown golden top. Hopefully. Oh my God, my oven is working sort of. Look at it. My oven's going. All right, so I flipped it. I'm just gonna put this back, the cover back on. I need to cook it a little bit longer, but y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready, that pasty we had earlier in the town. I mean, but y'all ain't ready. So there you have it, folks. We have our pasty Ode to Michigan vegan style homemade dough inside this beautiful puffy warm cloud it is puerto rican picadillo vegan okay i appreciate the pasty we had in michigan but i know that this is better let's see what we got y'all check that out okay oh it's flaky it's succulent the flavor of the picadillo is crazy with their sweet of the raisins the briny of the olives, like the tomatoes, the potatoes, and this, this pastry is unreal. It actually worked in my cast iron oven. It's going to taste even better in your oven because you have an oven. If you want to make this, the link will be in the description. Thank you so much again for hanging out with us for Let's Play Ride and Eat. Catch us next Wednesday because I guarantee you I'm going to blow your mind with what I got next, okay? Because I keep these things in my mind. I got a couple weeks in advance in my head, okay? Thanks again. Like and subscribe. Mmm. We think. Mm. Amazing. Really? Yeah. So much flavor, especially compared to the last pasty that we had from an actual pasty store here, which I thought was a little on the boring side. This one isn't boring at all. Like, it's so much flavor. Michigan meets Puerto Rico in a pasty. Aw, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, guys. Catch you next time! And because we're in Minnesota... <laughs> Where the f*** are we? What month is it? May? Okay, make my coconut. Got this in Mexico. Made it, actually, out of a real coconut. I miss you, Baja. This thing is very, very powerful, okay? So, I'm not abusing my blender, okay? We have a very good relationship. Don't we, man? Her name is Shmiga. Happy's <laughs> I shouldn't do that because it's raw onion. Oh my god. <laughs> now I'm crying. We have 3D printed hearts, but we can't have smell a vision. I oh won't. no, don't even. Come on, this is amazing. Drinking my wine. Cool my feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said our cooling is filled. That's all right, right? Wait, oh. Our filling is cooled. That's perfect right there. Might be a little too much. We could take just a little bit out of there. Here we go. It doesn't make sense to like waste the filling, so. That's a new high and or low. I'm not sure yet. 
if this doesn't go viral, I give up. This is so hot. I'm going to melt my mouth, but I'm going to take a bite for you so that you can understand how I feel about this. It's so hot. It's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's so I'm gonna taste for an hour. Oh.